Hey everyone, it's Karen. So um, I am so excited for nonfiction November. I cannot even contain myself for the next two weeks. Um, basically, a while ago, I analyzed my reading and I realized that how much of what I read is actually nonfiction. And so that's really why I'm most excited for nonfiction November is just because I read so much nonfiction anyway. And so an entire month on the type of reading I love the most is going to be epic. Okay, so I wanna share with you some of the things that I'm excited about reading. The first two are library books. Then I basically took all the books from my cart I'll explain this in a second. Let's just go to the library books. So the first one was recommended by my friend Allie and it's called Touching the Void. She told me, don't read anything about this book. Don't look at the news articles or anything about it. Just read it. So please no spoilers in the comments, but I am looking forward to reading this one. And then also recommended by my friend Allie is the Dozier School for Boys. So we'll see what that one is about. She said that I needed to read it. So that's that. And then basically a few, I would say like a month or so ago, I reorganized all my books just because I wanted to kind of mix them up and look at them in a different way and see what I had. And so I sorted them by their Goodreads rate, ranking, rating, rating. And basically I took the ones that were highest rated and I put them on this cart that's behind me starting with the top shelf and working on um, the way down. And then anything that's not on the shelf went to this basket that I keep on the side of my couch. And then beyond that, they went on the bookshelves that are on the sides of my bed. So for this nonfiction November, I basically took all the nonfiction books off the top shelf, which means they are the highest rated nonfiction books that I own according to Goodreads. And I just put them in a giant pile <laughs> And those are what I'm going to pick from first as far as uh, this upcoming month. So I just wanna show um, you what I own that is the top rated. So first I have Five Lives Remembered, which is by Dolores Cannon. And she is definitely like a woo-woo author who um, I really value because I feel that even though her ideas are very out there, they do affirm some of the things, most of the things that I believe in. So they stretch my opinions rather than limiting them or completely changing them to something else. Anyway, she um, is a hypnotherapist and this is her first book that she, well, I don't know if it's her first one that she wrote, but it is at the very beginning of her journey into this past life hypnosis thing that she did. And so I kind of want to start at the beginning of her work and read forward because I have read um, one of her more recent books and I loved it, but I wanted to start at the beginning. Then I have a biography of Henry David Thoreau, who so many of you guys have told me is an amazing book and it's been on my shelves for a few years without me reading it. So I'm excited to get to that. Perspectives on the American Past. This was a book that was a textbook for college my freshman year. However, um, I really like how it looks at history from a different perspective and includes more of the perspectives of minorities. And so basically it's a book of essays and I want to read some of them. And then I have More Than Enough by Elaine um, Welter Rose. I don't know if I'm saying her last name correctly. It's written in weird cursive. Um, yeah, I think that's what it is. This was recommended by Brene Brown and I have not gotten to it yet, but I think it's just her memoir. And then Shadow Divers by Robert Curson. Um, this is about a diving team that looks into, I think, uh, finding a World War II boat or something. So that will be good. Drinking from the River of Light. I don't know if I'm going to get to this one. This one is a book that you could read slowly over the course of the year. It's on creativity and writing. And yeah, it's just something that you kind of dip into slowly, journal, dip into it a bit more, journal some more, and just really reflect. Then I have The Fire This Time by Jasmine Ward, which is a bunch of essays by really influential Black um, people. I think they're all American, but I'm not quite sure. 
and it's just a book about race and our current situation. And, huh. Anyway, then I have The Boys in the Boat, which is about nine Americans and their epic quest for gold at the 1936 Berlin Olympics. I've heard a lot of good things about this book, but I've never gotten to it. The Dragons, the Giant, and the Women by YA2 Moore. I've heard mixed reviews on this. It sounds amazing. I've heard a lot of people who love it, and then a lot of people were kind of underwhelmed. So we'll see what I think of that. Whoa. The Color of Law. I've heard only amazing things about this one. And then finally, Yoga and the Quest for the True Self by Stephen Cope. Um, I'm really into yoga. I'm trying to focus on doing it every day because it has been more difficult for me now that I'm home. But yeah, I think this is about yoga and mental health. And then there's two more books that I have for you guys. Um, basically, I stalked some people that I super trust on Goodreads and I found books that were nonfiction that they had given five stars to that I also already owned. And so someone gave five stars to The Devil in the White City by Eric Larson, which will be really interesting to read because it's about Chicago and I used to live in Chicago. And then finally, A Long Way Gone, Memoirs of a Boy Soldier by Ishmael B. I'm excited to read that one too. So, so much going on for nonfiction November. I cannot even wait. I'm curious what you guys are reading and I will talk to you later. Bye.